Today is November the 28th, 2012, and what I'm going to document tonight is uh, something that has been asked of me more than once, and just again just recently, should have done this one a long time ago, it's about um, dummy loads for uh, amplifiers, particular 8 ohm loads. So what, I've, what I have here is three commercial so-called 8 ohm non-inductive loads, that's what these are sold as. And what I have here are four very large. These are, if you can read that, I hope, 10 ohm, 130 watt. I've got them adjusted for 8 ohms, 8, 8, and 8. These two are parallel, so I have four, and these are four, and then they're in series for 8. Right here, so these are my 400 watt loads. And then I have these precision ones up here. Uh, these are uh, ARCOL, A-R-C-O-L. They're the ones that are um, described as uh, low inductance. Got them from mouser.com. I love these. These are one percenters. They have. Uh, they also have a, uh, a very low uh, temperature coefficient, meaning that uh, they don't change resistance when they get hot. They're excellent. I highly recommend these. But they're not necessary. Precision resistors are not necessary if you just want to dissipate the heat. Okay, let's start making some measurements. Here's our uh, our meter we're going to use. This is a quite accurate meter. We'll start by measuring this one, which says it's uh, 7.8 ohms. Okay, and we'll measure the second one here. And it's uh, 7.8 ohms. This one over here is a little goofy and sometimes I don't tell them what it's level to measure. Well, it measures nine this time. Sometimes I have to actually, <coughs> you know, slam it down. Yeah, there, see, now it's 9.8. This one, I guess, is kind of bad. Maybe we shouldn't even uh, include this one. Uh, and then, of course, the last one is, are these big guys right here. No, not the last one. Uh, let's put that on there, this one over here. They measure 8, 8.1, a little bit of resistance in the in the wires, and the uh, precision ones here measure 8.1, somewhere between 8.0 and 8.1, they're actually 8.0 if you measure them right up at the resistor, but we have a tiny bit of resistance in the wires, which is uh, of, of no consequence, and the other one measures the same. 8.1, it flicked down to 8.0 sometimes. Okay, so that's what our resistors are. We're going to assume that they're all 8 ohms because I have a um, an Excel program already written where I assumed 8 ohms. The, uh, the, the, um, the question here is about the inductance. The non-inductive so-called, the so-called non-inductive. We want to know what the inductance is and then will determine what the actual impedance is. Okay, we have uh, two inductance meters here just for, uh, let's, let's take this one out of the equation because that was a little weird sometimes and uh, clip our lead right here across this resistor and you'll see that we get about 2.9 if you can read that there, I hope you can you get a little bit different readings each time you do them. An insignificant amount, but... And then this one reads 2.8. I believe 2.8 is what I put in the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so those are 2.8. Those are quite low. Okay. Now, we're going to measure the inductance of these guys up here. And they measure... about 6.9 or close to 7 whatever you want to call that 7 right there okay and the same over here this one's going to measure the same when we get through the 6.7 I think I put 6.8 in the uh, calc in the uh, Excel spreadsheet 
and they'll measure very close to the same thing if we put them across here but to keep from wasting a lot of time here <clears throat> and then here are the uh, the uh, the big guys and they measure about 37 micro henry's all whoops all these measurements here in micro henry's as you can see at 37.10 micro henry's okay now with all that said <clears throat> what we have to do is impedance actual impedance z equals the square root of r squared plus x squared and x here is x of l equals to pi f l now f right here is uh, I have uh, put that in the spreadsheet I'm going to show you in a minute and that's this is the spreadsheet will tell us what we really want to know I've put in 20 Hertz 1 kilohertz uh, 10 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz that's the whole audio range right there and then I have put in the uh, the uh, inductance values and and I've calculated actual Z which is impedance so here's the truth right here Here's our precision resistors at 20 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, and 20 kilohertz. I hope that's focused very good. Here's the inductance I put in there, 6.7 micro henrys. And here's its impedance. This is the actual calculation of Z equals R squared plus X squared. It's 8. 8.00 all the way up 8 ohms, 8 ohms, 8 ohms, and 8 ohms, even up at 20 kilohertz. 6.7 micro henrys. This is the this is X of L right here. 4 8.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So that's 0 0.00842 ohms of inductive reactance. Right here. To the minus 2, that'd be 0 0.0421 ohms of inductive reactant. So we're doing 8 squared, we're doing the square root of 8 squared plus this squared. And this is the answer, it's 8 ohms, 8 ohms, 8 ohms, and 8 ohms. The big wire wound guys at 20 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, and 20 kilohertz, same thing. Right here we get uh, 4.65 times 10 to the minus 3, so that's 0 0.00465 ohms, so it comes out to be 8 ohms at 20 hertz, 8 ohms at a kilohertz, 8.3 ohms at 10 kilohertz, and 9.25 up at 20 kilohertz. That's the worst case condition. And that's the, that's a big wire, that's four big wire wound resistors. And then here are the uh, non-inductive ones, 8, 8, 8, and 8 at 20, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, and 20 kilohertz. Frequency, inductive reactants, inductive reactants, inductive reactants for the precision, the wire wound, and the non-inductive. They all come out to be 8 ohms, except in the worst case where we have this 37 micro Henry's up here, right there in that cell right there, for the large wire wound at 20 kilohertz we get 9.25 ohm, which is still okay. So what's the message? Message is a little bit of inductance doesn't matter because the impedance is the uh, square root of whatever the resistance is. Like I say I assumed 8 ohms in every one of this and instead of making it so complicated and the point is, is you can use wire wound resistors and they're going to work just fine. If you, uh, if you can get non-inductive resistors, uh, that's great. But these non-inductive resistors I showed you a while ago, I'm, I'm not very pleased with them. Now, the, uh, these guys right here, I'm not charmed by them. These, the, this is the worst case, which is what we would expect. But still... It's not bad. It's still it's going to give you 8 ohms. And it's going to dissipate a lot of power. And these are the best. They're about 55 or 60 bucks a piece, I think. And then I've got them mounted on a heat sink. So, and uh, this right here actually just switches uh, this coax between the two. So that I can look at the left channel and the right channel that uh, feeds over to this little distribution box. And this distribution box right here 
comes in right here when I have the 8 ohm load plugged in and it just feeds everything at once so that at a glance I can look at the of course that's not feeding anything right now I don't know what's being shown now but I can look at it on oscilloscope I can look at its frequency I'm looking at something in kilohertz aren't I I can look at its spectral output I can look at its voltage right here and I can once again look at its voltage up here and then I can look at its uh, THC right there so there you go that is um, my view of non-inductive so-called there's no such thing as non-inductive everything has inductance in it but the inductance is so small that it doesn't matter so if you have some big wire wound resistors like this you can use them it's not going to hurt anything and 8 ohms doesn't mean it's 8.0 ohms it just it means somewhere between about 7 and 9 which would uh, be perfectly good so I hope this helps uh, dispel some of the uh, I guess the false beliefs in uh, in non in so-called the non-inductive resistors just darn near any of them matter now if you have one if you had a, a smaller resistor that had uh, a couple of thousand turns of very small wire in it I don't know what the inductance of it would be I'm gonna see if I can find some and I'll end the video uh, with that if I can find some and uh, We'll see if that actually makes any difference. I don't have any uh, uh, very large multi-turn, high-turn uh, uh, resistors wire wound that I can uh, at eight ohms or even at a higher resistance that would uh, I can use. These are from Radio Shack. These are called. Uh, these are 8 ohm, and then they're called non-inductive. I think that's a misnomer. They ought to call them low inductance or ultra low inductance. But anyway, they're, they are definitely low. Uh, 1.8 micro Henry's. So they're going to be very flat 8 ohms, assuming they are 8 ohms. Let's see if they are uh, between in, in the audio range between uh, 20 and 20 kilohertz. Let's see if we can trust them. Well, they're 7.9. Call that 8. So there you go. I hope this helps.